Welcome to Real Estate Real World, where we talk to the movers, shakers, and leaders that are getting it done right now in the real estate industry and beyond. I'm your host, Marguerite Crespillo, and I started this podcast simply dedicated to calling people about what's really happening in this crazy roller coaster ride of real estate. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and stay up to date on the newest stuff by adding yourself to the list at www.realestaterealworld.com. Now, let's dive into the world of real estate. Hello, everybody. It's Marguerite Crispillo, and guess what time it is? It is time for Real Estate Real World. And today, we have a fabulous guest, Coach Katie Delosto, a dynamic leader based in Honolulu, nice, originally from the San Francisco Bay Area. With a direct and heart-centered approach, Katie specializes in shaking things up, yes, she does, and providing fresh perspectives for leaders facing challenges. Drawing inspiration from one of my favorite books, Patrick's Five Dysfunctions of a Team, she guides teams to achieve desired results by unlocking the hidden potential within. As the author of Fortune Cookie Leadership, Katie imparts weekly life strategies and concise phrases, blending her marketing degree from Santa Clara University with valuable insights learned from her mother. Beyond her coaching role, Katie actively contributes to her community, serving as chapter president of the Santa Clara University Alumni Hawaii chapter and vice president of the Friends of Italy Society of Hawaii. Her passion for personal development extends to volunteering with PSI seminars, which is fabulous, by the way. And she's devoted. She's a devoted baseball fan and proud mother of three. Known as Coach Katie since 2009, she's the go-to person to energize and propel your team or business forward. Welcome, welcome, my friend. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. You bet. I'm chuckling to myself because I remember the first time we met. We were both at a speaking engagement. I can't remember exactly where we were. In Wisconsin. We were were in Wisconsin. I know. And what's funny about Wisconsin, when they originally asked me to come out and speak, I'm like, is there snow on the ground? Because <laughs> I am I like to visit snow and go home. I'm not like the one who likes to live or have to move or drive or anything like that in snow. And then we met there and we had a, a common friend, Rick Jiha, rest his soul. Mm-hmm. We're, mm-hmm. we're sad that he's no longer with us. But yes. I remember he sent me a text or something. He's, oh my gosh, my friend Katie's there. So it was so great to connect with you and we've just stayed connected since then. Yes, you know, strong, powerful female leaders. Right? We've, we've got we got to stake our claim together and, and help support each other. So it's awesome. 100%. We got to stick it out, right? Mm-hmm. So with coaching, you're a fabulous coach. I've heard lots of amazing things about you and you do a lot with teams. So I'm really curious, like what is going on right now with, we're talking here in December of 2023 and we're facing a dramatically changing market. Mm -hmm. So what's going on with that? And and what are you doing to help keep your people from flipping out? (laughs) It's interesting when the market first shifted, a lot of my clients were like, look, And some of my clients had never experienced a shifting market. And I was like, no, this is exciting. And they're like, what's wrong with you? Why are you excited about a shifting market? And I said, because in a shifting market is where the professionals get to stand out. And the people that in a previous market were opportunistic, and I'm, I am an opportunistic person and strike while the iron is hot hundred percent, we're getting into a routine of, of business kind of just showing up versus being a professional. And some of the really professional agents were just busy, right? And they didn't have time to really demonstrate how good they are as a, an advisor, as a consultant, as somebody who's a, a trusted advisor for the largest financial investments of your life. And for most people, the home is the most important investment of their life or the, or the most significant investment of their life and is the number one indicator of generational wealth. And so we, in this market as real estate agents and mortgage professionals, and the same thing, get an opportunity to demonstrate their professionalism, their value. And this is the market to take over market share. 
Now, that may mean you've got to do things differently. Your lead generation has to adapt. Your presentation skills have to adapt. Your ability to communicate value and a need to meet with you also must shift. We still have to do the same things over and over. And I've heard this. It's a back to basics market, which I, I think is true. And I'm like, why do we leave the basics? Why are we going back to the basics? Let's just put the basics in. If you haven't done it already, if this is your first shifting market, you put the basics in forever. It, you don't ever leave the basics. It's consistency, time on task over time. And that's what I'm really focusing on with my clients right now. It's interesting because I've talked about this a couple of times on the show is we have an entire generation right now of both consumers and real estate agents that since 2010 have seen nothing but a rising market and low interest rates, literally 13 years. That's a long time. Yep. And long time. now all of a sudden the agents don't know what to do. And consumers, frankly, are stumped as well. They don't, they're like, but I bought my house three years ago and it should be worth X amount of dollars. And it's not worth X amount of dollars. Or now we're not getting the 150 offers, 200,000 over asking. And we're not getting what our expectations or the expectations that have been set. Because mm -hmm. to be honest with you, many agents will say, buy a house because in two years from now, it's going to be worth X, which is always a mistake, right? None of us have, <laughs> have that magic ball that tells us what to right. do. So it's just really interesting to me what is happening currently in the market. Agreed. And I think it's where I said we come in as true professionals to demonstrate to people this is not about having a crystal ball. This is about what are you looking to do in the short term and the long term. So I don't have any control over the market. I don't have any control over interest rates. What I do have control of is my own financial health. So if I'm renting today and I take that same amount of money and put it towards a mortgage payment, I am building long-term wealth. If that mortgage payment maybe is a little, ooh, it's a little tighter, it's gonna be a little bit more uncomfortable because of interest rates, I have control over my income. This economy gives us an opportunity that has never been available before to go and make an extra $500 or $1,000 a month by being an Uber driver, by uh, working for DoorDash. I mean, if, if there are so many different ways to make extra $500, $1,000 a month if you need it. You can absolutely go make that money. I don't have control of what interest rates are going to do or the appreciation of the market over time. Now, we also know intellectually that this is still a market where we have a, an inventory shortage. And this is the purest form of supply and demand. This is the most pure economic situation in the United States. It's supply and demand. We know when supply is low, demand is high. We're still seeing demand for properties. We're still seeing multiple offers. It's different. It's still a reality. And we have to be the voice of reason, understanding that we are talking about a ginormous financial investment. And the actual investment itself is relatively small percentage wise on what we get by holding on to property. And yes, the property you buy today may not be the dream house. It is still building wealth because if nothing else, if appreciation doesn't go up for five years, you will still be appreciating by just merely paying your mortgage. You are creating your own appreciation by paying down your mortgage. This is how you build equity, by paying your mortgage every month. If additional equity comes out of the clear blue sky with appreciation, awesome. Do a happy dance. Have a parade and confetti. In the meantime, just keep paying your mortgage and you're accumulating wealth. It's funny because the one thing that, you, that I got out of that is something that I learned many years ago, and I, I like to say it's my quote, who knows? <laughs> is that I'm in charge of my own economy, right? Yes. Like yes. I'm the one who's in charge of my own economy, despite what is going on with our government, with politics, with the economy, with the market, I still have that potential and that control to do. And you're right. Like we're in these crazy times where you can make money doing, my one son is making money selling things on this new one thing called what's, I don't know what it's called. It's a new app or something, a what's up or something like that. What's it called? what not right okay. and so there's so many creative things that you can do these days but at the end of the day we have to be as transparent as we possibly can with our clients and you're right we don't 
We have no idea. I've been doing this 30 years. December 23rd would be my 30th anniversary. Wow. And I remember when I bought, uh, my husband and I bought our very first condo and it was like $35,000 and it was not in a great area. Right? It was not in the best area, but it was something. And right. we ended up hanging on to that, buying a second house that became a rental until we could finally afford to get into the home of our dreams that we've lived in for 30 years. But it didn't happen overnight. It took some time. No. And right. I think people need to understand that. And same thing with a career in real estate. Don't you agree? It's not, there's no magic easy button. I wish there was. <laughs> it's the daily work that you have to do. So what kind of advice do you get when you say go back to basics? What does that look like for your clients and the people that you're coaching and talking to right now? Yes. I literally had this conversation yesterday. I said, okay, take out your phone. And everybody has the opportunity on their phone and their contacts to look to see how many contacts you have in your phone. Now, I have 6,000 names in my phone. Other people have, I, yesterday I said 187, he had 187 names in his phone. And I said, wouldn't it be cool to double the size of your database? I said, how do you do that? I said, well, it's December. It's the holidays and it's the new year. It's Valentine's Day. It's Easter. It's the summer. It's fourth. I don't care. Pick a season. Find that you can, every day is a holiday somewhere. So figure out what the holiday is. Call people in your phone and just say, hey, I'm just touching base. I'm really committed to growing my business in 2024. Who do you know that I need to get to know? Who's somebody that's a master networker, a CPA, a financial planner, the PTA president, the principal of a school, the president of their local association of fill in the blank, and just go meet people. This is a contact sport. Sales is a contact sport. So my background is, the joke is, but it's true because there's truth in all humor, is that I, I went to Catholic school, so I started selling in the first grade. I've been <laughs> I've been literally knocking on doors since I was six years old. I'm a person that happens to be extremely goal oriented. So when I was six, if you sold six boxes of candy, you got to go to Great America. And I was like, done, I'm six years old. Who doesn't want to go to Great America when you're six years old? So I had, so I went out and I sold my six boxes and I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. I go knock on doors. I talk about candy bars for my school. I sell candy bars. I, I go to Great America. It's not complicated. And that's what this is. And that's the bit back to basics is this is a contact sport, figuring out how many contacts you need to make on a weekly basis to get the number of appointments you need to have on a weekly basis to get the listings you want on a weekly basis. Now, I firmly believe, especially what's going on in our industry right now, that a buyer is as much a listing appointment as a seller. 100%. And that you do listing appointments with both buyers and sellers. So if you know how many listing appointments you need to be having every single week, you back it out to the contacts. I only have 187 names on my phone. Is that enough contact? Probably not. So go make more contacts. And can I do my soapbox now, Marguerite? Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I was, Marguerite and I were doing a little prep before this. So just, what's your main message? And I'm like, if, if you guys remember one thing from this podcast, one thing, this is it. So get out your pencil. Anytime somebody asks you, How's the market? Book an appointment. It's the international sign for book the appointment. I actually did an exercise once with our friend, Rick Jiha, who has a real estate team. And I had said to him, on an average week, how many times do you and your team collectively get people ask you, how's the market? And it was like, oh my gosh, with my whole team, it's maybe 30 times a week. And I said, okay, so how many weeks a year do you work? Or does your team work? Okay. So say it's 40, right? Now I, and so 40 times 30, that's 1200 people that asked, how's the market? How many of those people bought and sold real estate with you or possibly bought and sold real estate with somebody else? If we don't know, because it was a casual conversation and we casually answered it, then we're leaving leads on the table. Everybody who is saying to you over the phone or face-to-face, -face, how is the market? It's the international sign for book an appointment. This is the opportunity to sit down with people and talk about the largest financial investment of their lives. Most people meet with their CPA once a year, and they meet with a financial planner once a year to discuss their other kinds of investments. What annual meeting are they doing around their largest financial investment? 
And is it the single most indicator of generational? They're not doing it because we're not asking. And so we need to respond to the how's the market question with, hey, that's a great question. Is this for your home or somebody that's important to you? Or what do you, you know, we need to sit down and talk about this. It's not a casual conversation. Somebody says, how's the market? I believe it's the most personal question that people ask publicly. And so we need to respond to it as the professionals that we are. This market is for the professionals to demonstrate their mark, their, their true value in a shifting market. I think that's the best advice I've heard all year. I, I, I'm laughing inside myself because I'm like, how can it literally be that simple? And yeah. it legitimately is. And it is. The interesting thing too, is one of the pieces of advice I give all the time is activity breeds activity, right? Energy creates energy. And a lot of agents are having some pity parties right now, right? They're burying their head in the sand. They're locking themselves in their house. They're binge watching whatever shows are online right now. And I just want to tell this story of, I remember in 2009 and the market was pretty bad during that time. Yes. So I can tell you that in 2009, I think it was one of the worst markets in history. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm having a big old pity party, right? I'm selling a ton of REO during the time, but it was rough. I'm not going to lie for those of you who are listening in. Mm -hmm. And I remember I got a call from a friend of mine who said, hey, there's an opening in our B&I group. And I was like, eh, I don't have time for that. And I don't want to do a breakfast meeting. I was in a full-blown pity party. (laughs) And he goes, no, it's a lunch meeting. And he said, by the way, they're interviewing four agents. As soon as he said four agents, now I had competition, right? So now I'm like, oh, now I have to go win this. Like the <laughs> craziness in my head. Right. So I went and I interviewed for it and I got, I won it. And I got to be in this lunchtime BNI group. What that did is it forced me to get up, get dressed and show up every Wednesday at noon to this lunch. Mm-hmm. I had to get up. I had to show up because I promised I made a commitment and I had to go to this meeting every week and it completely changed the game for me because now once you're up, you're dressed, you got your makeup on, you might as well go to work and do some of the other stuff that you need to do. And what that clicked in my head for me was the importance of filling up your calendar, setting appointments. I don't care if it's an appointment to go preview homes. Maybe you go pick five homes in the area that you would love to see. Maybe you set up a meeting to go meet with a lender or a realtor or a a home inspection company or an attorney. Who cares? Maybe it's just lunch with a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever it is. But whatever forces you to get up and get dressed and get your hiney out of the house can be a game changer for people, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I just think that there's so much value in creatively finding ways to force yourself to go out and do exactly what you said, to build that network, to build, to get in front of people, to get around. You're right. This is a contact sport. We got to get in sport. front of people, whatever that takes for you, whether it's an accountability partner, whether it's a coach who kicks your hiney, whether <laughs> it's, or someone you have to be accountable to that says, cause here's what I know about 99% of the people in the world. You will let yourself down all day long, mm-hmm. but you won't let somebody else down. Yeah. If I commit to you that I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, I'm not going to show up and not have done it and make myself look bad. Yep. Yep. All right. Sounds like we're starting an accountability group there, Margaret. So, <laughs> we're in the one in the morning, which I'm getting better about. Yes. You know, yes. So and and and, I, and that's a huge one. I literally this morning I will. We're in, Margaret and I are in accountability group, and and this morning I it's been a very busy week. I woke up, my alarm went off, and I'm like, I'll get up in a minute. And then 20 minutes later go by and I'm like, maybe I'll skip the accountability call. And then I'm like, and just even the thought goes through my head, like a ticker tape. And I'm like, nope, no way. So I'm like, I'll be late, but I'll get there. When you're and, even like, when we get on, it's eight o'clock my time in the morning. What time is it your time? And when we first started, it was 5 a.m. And so I was oh. on the calls at 5 a.m. And so my alarm was going off at 4.30. Now it's, I get to sleep in till five. And I, I usually, I do my best to do my workout before jumping on the call at 6 a.m. so that the workout's done. So that it's one less thing to do with my day. And by 8 a.m., my workout's done and my lead generation is done for the day. You're a better so. human than me because I are, nobody's going <laughs> to see my face at 5 a.m. Yeah, it's interesting to work on multiple time zones. I'm now creating an environment where I'm working 12 to 14 hours a day. I do take some 
some breaks. I go for a walk or I'll take it. Usually it's the whole, like, don't take any personal calls while you're working. So I do some of the personal stuff in between the 14 hour long day, but start to finish. Like when I finish my day, it, it is, it's activity. And here's one of the things I'm going to give a little trick um, for your brain, because a lot of people in this kind of market where you're saying like the pity party, it's easy to do that. So find one, find a friend who is out doing stuff and just, and have them just call you because even you seeing their name on the phone, even if you don't answer, is going to be like, all right, I got to go. I got to get going. I got to get, I got to get moving. And then the other piece of it is make a game out of it. Remember, okay. I want you guys to think about being an eight-year-old. So this is actually a sales training class that I teach. I was in corporate sales for 15 years before getting into real estate. So I do a lot of sales training inside real estate and mortgage, but I also do it outside of our industry as well. And the, the half day class I'm teaching right now is selling like an eight-year-old. People are like, what are you talking about? And I said, when you sell like an eight-year-old, so if you, if anybody has ever met a child, I'm sorry, if you've ever been a child, you remember your ability to sell. The greatest salespeople on the planet are six, seven, and eight-year-olds. Because <laughs> they, it's so true. I had a time I would, where my son was in the back seat and he was selling me, and I don't even remember what the idea was, but he was objection handling like a tennis player. Bang, just go. And I was like, wow, as a sales trainer, I am so impressed by this. And as your mother, I'm a little frustrated because I've told like seven times. <laughs> But it was just like, wow, his energy, his persistence. And he wasn't rude. He was just passionate and excited. And so that's the part of it too, is when you're out talking to people, I want you guys to think about being an eight-year-old and saying, look, if Marguerite, what was your favorite thing to play on the playground at recess when you were a kid? Tetherball. Tetherball. Perfect. So you go to the playground at recess and you go to somebody and you say, hi, Mark, would you like to play tetherball? And Mark's, no, I don't really want to play tetherball. And then you go to Sarah, would you like to play tetherball? No, I don't really like to play tetherball. Okay. And eventually you get to find somebody and you get to find Joe and you say, Joe, would you like to play tetherball? And Joe says, yes, I'd like to play tetherball. And then we play tetherball together and we have a great time. Now, what happens is you go back, maybe you go back to Mark a couple of different times and say, do you want to play tetherball? Mark finally says, you know what? I don't really know how to play tetherball. I don't know the rules. I don't know how this works. And so it's like, oh, let me show, but I love, he's like, but you seem to really love tetherball. So let's talk, tell me about why you like tetherball. And maybe Mark really likes to play kickball. And you might say, hmm, I don't play kickball very much. Talk to me about what you like about kickball. But the idea is that stay curious, stay passionate, and you can book appointments this way. And really, nobody is rejecting you. They just don't want to play tetherball today. That doesn't mean they're not going to play tetherball tomorrow or a month from now or a year from now. But your enthusiasm and energy around real estate and what you know that it does for people's lives in the short term and the long term. So the number one indicator of generational wealth is that your passion for it and you keep coming back to people and reminding them that you're still in real estate and why you're so passionate about this business will be attractive enough for you to go, oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You got me. You've asked me like four times like to play tetherball. Let's talk about tetherball and start to have that conversation. So sell like an eight-year-old. I'm Super cracking up right now because, you know, I have two sons mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about my youngest son, John, who is still like a master salesman. He's 27 <laughs> years old now. And it's so funny because I remember, uh, I'll tell this quick story. He was probably maybe nine or 10 years, maybe eight. I don't know. But he hops in the car one day after school and he says, Hey mom, I want to earn some extra money. Do you have some chores or, or stuff I could do around the house? I'm like, oh yeah, I got plenty of stuff you can do. I said, how much an hour do you want to get paid? And he goes, how about $5? And I was like, that's great. I'm happy to pay five bucks. He goes, and he's very intuitive this one, right? And he goes, would you have paid more? And I said, well, yeah, I would have paid more. He goes, how much more would you have paid? I go, I might've been willing to pay 10 bucks. He goes, okay, I want 10 bucks. I go, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> said, let's, let's talk about this lesson, John. Here's the rule of negotiating 101. The first one who speaks loses, right? And he goes, oh, he's so mad. So the next day, true story, his older brother, Jay, cops in the car. Same thing. Hey, mom, I'd like to make some extra money. 
and John just starts snickering right in the corner. <laughs> and so he listens as I walk Jake through this same life lesson. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's so true how, you know, that eight year old, cause I was a persistent little salesperson. I was more mm -hmm. of an entrepreneur in that way mm -hmm. because I remember being around 10 years old and I grew up in Chico and in Chico, the walnuts would just fall. Everyone had walnut trees. The walnuts would yep. fall on the ground. And we had diamond, blue diamond nuts that was in our area. And you could fill a gunny sack. It was a 50 pound gunny sack and you'd get five bucks for that gunny sack, right? I quickly figured out that it was a lot more fun to collect the $5 than it was to collect the nuts. So I paid my brothers <laughs> $2.50 to fill the bags. And then I would go turn in the bags and get the five bucks. So I'm just laughing as you're telling these stories because kids are so creative. And if we could just yeah. take ourselves back to that place in, because I now have a 10 year old grandson who's, he's a master salesman. He is also holding his dad accountable because we have these two little mini horses and Jordan, my grandson wants a big horse. I go, you can't get a big horse until you learn how to take care of the mini horses. And he goes, but I need my dad's help. I go, then it's up to you to go drag your dad out to the pasture and have him help you build the corrals and do all the stuff you need. So every day he's been coming in, he's okay, Nina, which is my grandma's name. He goes, okay, Nina, I went out and fed the horses and I sat with them a while today. He goes, but I really need that corral built. And I said, who do you need to talk to? And he said, dad, it's day five. I need that corral built. And I'm just dying on the inside. I'm laughing so hard. Yeah. He is, he's going to convince his dad of what needs to have happen. And I'm totally stepping out of it. I'm like, that's between the two of you. Can really? take yes. back to that. That's great advice. You don't give up when you're an eight-year-old and you want to go to great America. No way. That's why goal setting is so important because you remember why you're doing it, right? Yeah. Like this, I am, they said sales is a contact sport. And when you know how many people to contact, like, okay, I got to talk to 10 people to get one person to play tetherball with me. Okay, cool. I, I got to go talk to 10 people. And there's another tip that I'm giving to people that they think it's funny, but it, it works is I said, okay, look, go to Starbucks and have a sticker on the back of your laptop that says I'm a realtor or wear a shirt that says it's your realtor and people will come up to you and ask you how's the market it's easy right people love to talk about real estate go to parties have parties right and if you don't like parties if you're like I don't really like people that much I like to do contracts but I don't like people fine go to a networking event meet five new people exchange five new business cards and leave be purposeful about your task and go that's fine too. My other one is that I get a lot of people like, I don't want to take people to dinner or lunch or that kind of thing. And I said, okay, go to happy hour and then walk into happy hour and say, my coach says I can't have my first drink until I've exchanged five business cards and <laughs> people will laugh and they're like, okay, what do you do? I'm a real estate agent. How's the market, right? So now you've got not only new contacts, you're also going to book appointments and I, it's amazing what happened. You know what just popped up for me, Katie, when you were saying that is instead of that sticker saying I'm a realtor, what if your sticker said, how's the real estate market? Ask me now. Yep. Ask, Ask me, me about now. the real estate market. Ask me about real estate. Yeah. It's, people love to talk about it. Like I said, I was in corporate sales for 15 years. Uh, this is my second time living in Hawaii. When I lived here in the 90s, I got a job selling copiers and I couldn't pronounce the street names. Getting directions was fun. And so, so I would go to happy hours and holiday parties and birthday parties. And people never once asked me how the copier market was. Not once. Nobody ever said, so Katie, how's the copier market? No one ever. I have never been in, a, in any sort of a sales environment where people walk up to you and essentially say, hi, I'm a prospective client of yours. And someday I may need to hire you. Would you tell me how amazing you are? Please, that's what how's the market is. Let me tell you how amazing I am and why we need to talk about this really important thing called real estate. So let's just say how valuable this conversation has been and how valuable it probably is to get a coach because literally in 30 years, I've never looked at it from that perspective in all of my career and thousands of homes I've sold and probably hundreds of thousands of people I've spoken to. I've literally never thought of it that way. And that really is the value of 
either a getting a coach or having these strategic conversations where you can learn that little simple, it's never anything big. Isn't that the crazy no. part? No, never. You think it's going to be this like, oh, this huge thing that happens. <laughs> and it's never, it's something so tiny and minute that can make such, what is that quote? I can't think of it that right now that like when you have the big boat or whatever. And it, anyway, small things that steer big boats. But the I one degree, it's the one degree. If you're taking your boat from San Francisco and you're aiming it towards Japan, if you go off one degree, you'll end up in New Zealand. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's the one degree. It's just like that one degree just it, from a nautical perspective is a huge result. And so it's that one, per, and I have a coach too, right? I not only coach people, but I have my own coach and he, cause None of us can see the picture from inside the frame. None of us. So we need that outside perspective. And sometimes it's, I do group coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I'm always, even the group coaching where people are not really participating, they're putting in the chat like, wow, that was super helpful. Or I hadn't thought about it that way. Or I got a quick question. But it's not, it, it's, and I think we do that in our, our accountability group that you and I are in, that it's like, oh man, that's so simple. Why didn't I see it that way? I didn't think about it. So it's really valuable to get that, for, especially in this market, you always get a return on investments when you invest in yourself, 100% of the time, 100% of the time. And if you actually look at it that way of if you could just improve what you're doing 1% a day, even 1% a month, could mm -hmm. it change in your business? That's a 12% increase in your skill set, your communication skills, heck, your self-worth. Those things are so valuable. And like this 1%, I'm going to do some personal development this month. Next month, I'm going to get much better at lead generation and converting a lead into an appointment and an appointment to a contract, right? Those things all add up and they're all connected. Not, our brains are not a silo. We're all connected to each other and we're all connected to success. Whether it's, I'm going to get better about drinking my water. That's how I'm going to get 1% this month. Let's be really diligent about my water, my exercise, my mental the kind of books that I'm reading. I'm going to not watch the news I'm going to watch the news one day a week, or I stopped watching the news about three years ago. Oh, uh, years. Awful. Sorry, that's, that's another soapbox of mine, but it's just, <laughs> I have many soapboxes and it's just, but find those, what's the 1% for maybe each month of the year that I'm going to improve? Because when you are improving your personal development and your personal growth and your health and your finances, it has a ripple effect on your business and then vice versa. So powerful. And I just, I'm blown away myself by this conversation today. So it's been pretty amazing. So as we wrap up today, I'm going to ask you a funny question because as a fellow okay. Italian, okay, what is your favorite thing to cook? Oh, it's funny. I'm actually a baker too. I love to bake chocolate chip cookies. I do it actually sometimes I've been doing it so long that it becomes therapy for me. It's just something I do. And then I end up giving it away and it makes people happy. I like to make lasagna. Oh, me too. I really like to make lasagna. And I think it's the same thing because it's just, it's a bunch of different pieces and then Eric. you put it all together. And it, I mean, it just, and it smells so good. And I like lasagna leftovers and yes. Yeah, so. Oh yeah, lasagna the next day is, is epic. I actually, this last summer I made, I had a fantastic garden. I got lucky this year. And I made two big trays of lasagna for Christmas Eve tonight. So I'm Ooh. not tonight, this year. So I'm really excited to put them out. And then I'll have to send you my sourdough discard chocolate chip cookies because they're like over the top. Oh, I love that. That sounds awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. This has been honestly one of the best conversations I've had in a while. And tons of great tips and tricks. So for those of you out there, thank you, Katie. If you're interested in coaching with her, we'll be sure to have her links all in the show notes. She's easily accessible on social media. You can reach out to her and get a hold of her. But thank you so much for joining us today, Katie. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us on Real Estate Real World, where we get to talk to all the cool people. And we have lots of great tips and tricks on how to help you with your business and what's going on currently in the market. Be sure to share this on all the social media channels, and we're available on all the podcast stations. So thank you, everybody, again, for joining us today and go out and make it a great day. 
Thank you for joining us today on Real Estate Real World, where we talk with masters and leaders in the real estate industry and beyond on how we can raise the bar in our industry. Please subscribe over on iTunes, and while you're there, be sure to give us a review. Your reviews encourage us and help others to find our podcast for show notes and hot topics on what's going on right now in our real estate industry. Also, hop on over to www.realestaterealworld.com and add your name to our email to get early advance notice of upcoming podcasts. Thanks again for listening and go out there and be a part of the elite masterclass and raising the bar on the real estate industry.